Hello and welcome to Breaking the Cycle to Step Forward podcast, episode 24. This is where we have 30 minutes of authentic conversation from both a lived experience and a professional perspective. And today we will be continuing on from last week's podcast when we were talking about resources. I'm Beverly Ann, and as always, I'm joined with the lovely Chris Tuck. Hi, everyone. Hello. And we last week in our podcast, we shared about resources with books that either we refer to ourselves or we recommend to others, our clients, friends, other survivors. And we thought this week we would share more of an insight into what's available visually, like videos um, for support, um, anything to listen to, or, you know, in addition to what they do now, podcasts. And both of us are avid speakers on all different platforms. And so we thought we'd share a little bit more because now people are getting to know who we are. Maybe they're ready to expand out more. And we'd like to share some other people as well that do some great work within the survivor community. Yeah, I think uh, sharing our work was more about um, showing you that we speak with other people from different backgrounds, not just abuse, not just trauma, um, but the way that they deal with things in everyday life as well can be inspiring, can be motivational, or could just be the key for you to move forwards in whatever it is you're stuck in. Yeah, and I don't know about you, Chris, I remember when I very first wanted to be able to speak to, about things, I didn't have the words, but I didn't actually have information that I could really refer to, apart from the book that I spoke about last week. So now, being able to go online and, and look at videos of people and and, and just hear them speaking and, and see them has really been um, a key for me personally. What about yourself? Um, I just also wanted to sort of like say that sometimes you've got to look outside of what you're going through to get a different perspective to be shone on it for you to actually understand that you're not actually stuck and you do actually have all of the resources within you but it's just again unlocking that for you to move forwards um yeah I'll come up with an analogy I'm sure my brain will work on that by the time we finish but I just <laughs> wanted to put that in the pot as well well there is one um I remember at times thinking that I was the one going crazy with everything going on in my head and my body not and everyone around me seemed so normal and I felt so isolated and it was only once I was able to read see hear from other people oh I am normal I'm not the only one and even without doing anything further it it brought some kind of comfort to know that I wasn't as isolated as I really believed I was for me it's just come back into my head I was at um, a fitness um, seminar uh, and it was all to do with about mindset nutrition fitness um, and one of the things that was said to me is stop blaming other people for where you are and how you feel. And I'm like, how dare you say that to me? Of course, I'm going to blame these people. You know nothing about me. You know, it really touched me in a way that made me emotionally angry and raw because I thought, how dare you say something like that? But when you take the emotion out of it and you actually think about it, yeah. Yes, place the blame there, but if you don't deal with your emotions, that anger, and you just hold on to it, it's not hurting that person over there because they don't give a monkeys about you. Yeah, you're hurting yourself. So it did make me look at that anger and place it where it needs to be placed, and also work on it um, from my perspective so that it didn't have so much power over me. But oh, when that person yeah. said that to me, um, stop blaming other people I'm like of course I'm gonna bloody blame them why wouldn't I they did this to me I didn't do this to me <laughs> um, yeah so it was understanding that for me was the key for me moving on a little bit yes and it is always steps and even the smallest step it all adds up because even now you know there's little bits but it's once we have knowledge and power and understanding 
we we find that we start to accept ourselves and who we are and really tap into who we are and sometimes you know we'll know how to look after ourselves and other times we may need to reach out for support but we're able to find the words to be able to do that so we was talking about events that are coming up in this month but if someone picks up this podcast I don't know in a year's time obviously all of the stuff that we're going to be talking about now would have been over and done with however where can they find us Beverly where can they find all of our work where are we going to share it all well there's several different ways so if they want to see us in you know our every day and we're very conscious as in we when we come to these videos we come as ourselves so if you want to see you know who we are um come on to youtube and um breaking the cycle to step forward channel and you'll see uh, a basic introduction going through okay and all the videos are connected at the end so you don't even have to move off the channel so please like us so that you can follow us subscribe to us and add a comment if you wish to and every so often we'll be able to respond if you're on facebook you can come to us breaking the cycle to step forward on facebook and we will be uploading all the information there and again it will be an, an opportunity for you to come onto the Facebook and even share to other people. So if you are listening to this and you're not necessarily a survivor of sexual abuse, however, you're finding our podcast interesting because I do know a few people that are listening who are not necessarily survivors, but they like what we say. Great to be able to share to other people. But then independently, we've got websites. So, Chris, yours is um, www.survivorsofabuse.org.uk. And yours? I am the stepforwardpractice.co.uk. And as I said last week in the podcast about um, the books that we were discussing, all this information will go in the comments underneath. So, I'm not expecting you to remember it all. Um, so, yes, we've got that. But it's the events that we get asked to participate or we put ourselves yeah. forward for because there's a mixture. Yeah, there is a mixture. Some and of them we have to chase it down and some of us we are offered. Yes. And I like that because it shows our versatility. And yeah. also it brings different information to the fore. Um, so... This is actually going out live and um, premiering on the Friday, the 7th of October. Yeah. So we just wanted to share that in that week of the 7th of October, we're both being speakers in a production with Wendy Keir, yeah. which is Stand Up to Abuse. Do you want to say a bit more about it, Chris? Um, well, basically, I think there's 40 women taking part and they're all sharing different facets of their lived experience and how they've overcome how they dealt with or how they help others um through abuse after abuse all of that kind of angle i'm actually sharing on my talk um on the wednesday the fifth um how survivors of abuse was born and why it came into existence so what are you talking about and when I'm actually going to go back to when I was 15. Okay. Because also um, it's really prevalent. I did have a lot of um, people of well, adults. I was going to say people of authority. They were, but to me at 15, they were adults all around me. Yeah. And I was in a place of protection under court order. And yeah. yet nobody asked me. Mm. So I'm going to share a story that, somebody gave me that information about having self-respect and I want to share it from that and then show where where I am today and how that was the catalyst at the beginning of understanding how I could stop what was going on. So out of those faulty stories or lived experiences or interviews whatever you want to call them there is going to be something that resonates with somebody that's listening to this podcast. They just will be. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're all on um, replay as well, aren't they? So you can catch they them are. anytime. They are. And we so we'll will make... be sharing them on the Facebook page. Yeah. 
And, and that's what's great about it because it's inspirational. And this is important to know because each story, there may be information that could be potentially triggering. I'm not going to say it's not, mm -hmm. but also it's not necessarily. I know at one time when I first started to access some information, oh, what am I going to hear? And the fear of what I was going to hear was worse than what actually I was hearing. Yeah. Yeah. So we're sharing these resources, but please be aware of your own self-care. And please take a deep breath and, and be in a safe place when you're listening, but be reassured that in something like this, this is for education, but yeah. also it's to inspire. Yeah, and it's for growth, isn't it, ultimately, to, to move forwards. Absolutely. So we are also, this podcast, obviously, we are videoing this as well as having the um, audio so the audio of this is going to go on Karen Roberts podcast across multiple platforms um, as a podcast. And you're finding out more details about all of that today, which we can share again on the page going forwards. Absolutely. So Karen Roberts is a colleague that we both know over time that we've met and she's a very passionate lady and she's got Mint Wave Radio. That's really hard when my R's are quite soft. <laughs> <laughs> so she's launching um, Mint Wave Radio and podcasts, which is a mixture of various coaches, therapists, practitioners, wellness people, fitness, you know, and so there's a multitude of information there. And it's yeah, really I exciting. Some names on yes. that. Yes. Like, oh my God. <laughs> Brilliant. And what I love about all of this, you know, we know that when you're looking for support in whatever way, whether it be yeah. counselling, with whatever shape or form that you're looking for in your recovery, to be able to go to a place and hear people talking, see who they are, you know, get some access, think, oh, do I connect? Because we're all good at what we do, but if we don't connect with each other, it, it makes a big difference, as we've said in a previous podcast. Yeah. And I think when you hear um, different people say the same thing, but in a different way, you feel that you're actually taking on information that is real, that is valid, that is truthful, that is honest in, in, in its, you know, entirety. And you can just work with that. If someone, one person is just saying it and everybody else is saying different um, OK, you might be a bit of a maverick and you might be the first one to come come with that information. But people are more trusting of information that's shared by several people in different ways. Um, absolutely. Yeah, I feel yeah. that anyway. And absolutely. And I'll be very honest. Only this week I've had um, there was something that was sent to me and I went on the website and it's to do with something that's happening with me personally. So I'm not going to go too much into it. But it is about um, parental alienation, et cetera. Yeah. And to be, you have all these different thoughts as a parent, et cetera. So you're a parent, you're a partner, you're the young girl, a uh, survivor of abuse. And to be able to read and hear other people's experiences, it's like, oh, I'm not going out of my head. I really yeah. am normal. And I just wanted to share that because I don't want people to think that we sit here um, because yes we've come a long way but we still get our support and that is so important that's the key to recovery I believe anyway yeah yeah definitely so moving on you have young lady just this week or recently opened up a clinic tell us more about oh that. well yes so I used to live in Kent before all the lockdown BC I like to call it before Covid um <laughs> And I used to see clients sometimes in a, um, a room setting or at my home. And then I moved. So now I live down in West Sussex. I'm near the sea. And I was looking for rooms and I was invited by an osteopath to come and look at her clinic. And she's an osteopath, but she it's an osteopath and wellness clinic. So where we've talked about not just looking at the symptoms, but being able to look at the underlying, she's very much into um, holistic wellness. And so she's the hands-on. Um, I'll be there as the practitioner for 
chronic fatigue, chronic pain, you know, excess um, stress, trauma. So we'd be working collaboratively. And there's also other people there like occupational health, um, private medicals, etc. So I'm at the moment keeping myself to a, a Wednesday there because I'm still on Zoom and that's worldwide. So it gives me the, the structure to build on a Wednesday. So if anybody's near the, um, able to travel to the West Sussex area and they're interested in finding out more about one-to-one -one, or I'm doing small workshops there. And when I say workshops, that's group coaching so that could be up to four people and I think that's important to say because sometimes that's really important especially with um, families or just four people wanting to come in independently to learn about wellness yes yeah, so that's very exciting <laughs> Um, we are going to the House of Lords on the 14th of October What's that all about? <laughs> well, I'm asking that's... all the questions here because I've got it all written down. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the Institute of Recovery from Childhood Trauma, as we know. And again, BC, they used to hold the forums um, three times a year in the House of Lords because our patron back then was a lord himself. And we still have we have a different patron. I haven't actually met her yet because I didn't get to the last Oh no, it got cancelled the last one, didn't it? Yes, it and did, it was yeah. back on Zoom. So mm. I'm so looking forward to getting back to going to the House of Lords. And um, basically it's looking at particularly looked after children. And when mm -hmm. we're talking about looked after children, we're talking about children that don't live with their natural carers, uh, yeah. biological parents. So it may be that you're in a children's home. It may be that you're fostered. It may be that you lived in a boarding school it may be that you're living with um, members of the family so and it's looking at the impact but also coming forward what we can do um, for children that are particularly vulnerable and just really reiterating but it's been really interesting some of the things and the information that I've I've got from the forums myself and we've both found it an opportunity to voice our opinions at times as well, haven't we, Chris? Uh, uh, and, you know, what I get really irate about is that anybody in an institution that's running training, they always work in silos. They never look to the right or the left or the up and down and see what else is going on. So they put on their courses or their presentations or whatever it is they're doing. Um, and I'm like, well, actually, last week I was over there looking at what they were doing and they were saying exactly the same as what you're saying and exactly the same what you're having. Why don't you talk to each other and why don't you share resources instead of reinvent, reinventing the wheel, you know, use each other. Cut the costs, share the information, work together, move forward. And oh, that just gets on my nerves. That is part of my frustration. And that's where, you know, I've thanked the honourable person that stood up. <laughs> and I remember um, it's also the language that I hear yeah. because there was something once that I I did question because yeah. it was all about children in care. And as people know, I am I was brought up in care and um, went to several different children's homes. I was fostered as well. And I lived in a hostel. Um, and it was the things that I was hearing, the, mm -hmm. the, language. the kids, the language, the kids from care, um, yeah. the, 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 um, the bias, shall we just say yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But what I got frustrated is that he knew that the audience consisted of some of us that have experienced, lived experience, mm -hmm. but it's such a detached terminology, what is often yeah. used. And it's the tone and the expectations of these young people. Mm. And I have to say, I'm always polite, <laughs> but I did answer back. And at that time, I will say, he did try and um, he, he, his response wasn't actually very professional, but I will say somebody else jumped up who, who was the patron and um, had something to say there as well. 
So, yeah, mm-hmm. it's interesting. But I think that's also interesting for people to hear as well that I don't know about you, Chris, but for me to go to those forums, I have to do a lot of self-care. Yeah, before and after, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, because I'm hearing things that I don't always agree with. Yeah. As and not only share. that, it it has a response. It has an effect on us because we're so passionate about and most survivors will be passionate about, you know, what we've been through, the impact, and we don't want it happening to other people. We're passionate about all of that. Um, we might have come across as aggressive. We see ourselves as assertive and taking no nonsense, <laughs> but other people from the other side that's not seen this passion before <laughs> might think it's aggression, and it just isn't. Um, but if they get things wrong, they need to be taught that they've got it wrong. And the reality of the situation, that is what we bring. We bring the reality of the situation. And yes, we're not going to shout at you and scream in your face and attack you and all the rest of it. However, you will hear in our voice anger and passion. And that is assertion, not aggression. So they do need to learn that. Yeah. And they deal with us too, they do. Well, I like to say, help me to understand. (laughs) um because the other thing that I find frustrating is when you're talking about collective of people Mm -hmm. one size does not fit all no no no. you know we're talking about human beings so that's what we're doing on that day and I don't know about you and this is if anyone's watching you can see I get quite childlike when I walk in it's like oh I've grown up I'm in the House of Lords. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll let you know if I get that experience. <laughs> yeah. But I would actually like to do a short video uh, for our podcast Ooh, we'll when we're that. there next yes. week for anyone right. listening. Right. On the 15th, of, I, I'm in charge here, miss. All right. I okay. have a sheet of paper. All right. So on the 15th, <laughs> you are doing something else. What are you doing on the 15th? This is where my practitioner hat is back on. So it's with the Chrysalis Effect, and I'm accredited with them as a well-being coach and also a specialist um, practitioner. And that's for the recovery of chronic fatigue, ME, fibromyalgia. But for some people particularly interesting is long COVID. So they have an online recovery program. And again, they're looking at it holistically put my teeth back in so it's not just about looking at the physical symptoms it's being able to look at them first and looking at nutrition but it's also looking at other things you know lifestyle and pace your environment around you your emotions your Mm. relationship not necessarily relationship with everyone else at first but your relationship with yourself Mm -hmm. And that's my area of the expertise. That's the part that I come into with the relationship with self and emotions. So I work particularly looking at any connection with childhood trauma. And when I say any connection, we often don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's looking at not necessarily what the trauma was, but how did you cope? Your coping mechanisms, all the things that we talk about. And, all, you know, the things that you do in a different language. Yeah, I think especially for the last two years, people that are suffering with long COVID and there's the other side of that that I'm not going to go into. Um, but everybody over the last two to three years has been living under fear, overwhelm, not knowing what's going on, anxious all the time. You can see it in our children. You can see it in our teenagers, our young adults, adults. You can see it across the board. So what you've just explained about the emotional um, and all of that side of it is really, really important to work on building people's um, mental health again, as well as their physical health. Absolutely. And this is something, this will, event will be over three days. So the first two days are specialists and doctors that are talking to you in, in great detail, <clears throat> such as nutrition. So um If you're interested in that, you can listen and get a lot of information. On the Saturday, it's live and it's in the morning and there will be breakout rooms. And Mm -hmm. I'm hosting one of those. um, And that is about overcoming childhood trauma because not necessarily everybody recognises it or is ready to have a look at that. It's 
45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So again, I'll put the information in. So if people do want to join, there is a donation request to take to join this. But again, it's a donation request. So you have the freedom to choose. But um, I'm always happy to offer more information. If this has already gone out and you're interested in the videos, etc., they will be able to be purchased still through donation afterwards. And again, that information will will be included. But it's I would say it's very um, interesting for professionals, um, for individuals, for supporters, um, carers, because they get information as well. Okay. So on so that's 15th of October. On the October the 20th on the Thursday, there's going to be a massive media um, turnout for the publication of the in independent inquiry into child sexual abuse final report that will have recommendations in it that we are strongly putting towards the government to implement in order to better protect children of today tomorrow from child sexual abuse so there as i said it should be on all news outlets mainstream media and others and I'm hoping, obviously, to speak about this as much as possible. And maybe in some future podcasts, we can pick things out of the final report that will help people get involved, especially victim and survivors that have already been involved with the inquiry over the years, to actually get involved with our podcast. And, and we can actually come up. I can't um, say anything about what's in the final report because it's I just not allowed to but once it's published we can then pick it apart and actually yes. then um you know speak about it discuss it and 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 take some um action yes. as a collective in the victim survivors yeah. world depending on what it is we need to deal with um, depending on what the government decide to do with it you know um because at the what's the saying you can um Take lead someone to, to the yeah but you can't make them drink so exactly yeah. this with the report any kind of report you can give it to the person you can give a book to a person but you can't make them read it and you can't yes. make them implement it um but the thing is victim and survivors we've had enough yes we really have it's time for accountability so going forwards that is our job part of yes. our job absolutely so, now we're going to have to move on. I am going to have to push you on because we've both been speaking because we're so passionate, yeah. but we are overrunning now. So we've got a couple of more minutes couple to make a nod, a, a nod to other people because yes. we're not the only ones no, doing some brilliant no, no, work. No. There's loads of people out there, and that's what's so lovely about it. you know each of our individual voices are becoming stronger because of all the work that everybody does and every yes. survivor does. So there is a lady called Emma Jane, EJ, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, that has a podcast called The Silenced. And I am the CSA activist on that. God knows what that means. I think it means I open my mouth and I speak up and I don't shut up. But there you go. I am I, um, um, on that one as part of her panel and she raises awareness of child sexual abuse in different ways, but completely different to how we do it. So, yes. and I know that you are also involved in other things, aren't you? Other podcasts as well. Yes. Well, if anybody invites me, <laughs> <laughs> which they do. And, and even some that I've recorded ages ago, even to this morning on LinkedIn, I saw there was a wellness video that I'm um, podcast that I made with um, somebody and that's been shared on LinkedIn at the moment but I will get the information and share that. But you are also involved aren't you with our good friend Pauline Sharp tell us oh, about okay. that. Yes um, well when I say I, I'm she's started a peer-to-peer -peer group in mm -hmm. Haven Portsmouth yeah. on the first Monday of every month um I go along there because it's great for me as a survivor and also to support Pauline but she's done all of this this is a, 
um, something that Pauline's wanted to do for years and thought very carefully about it and put this together. So that's, um, we went, the first one was last month, went to that and that was fantastic. So I'll be going again this Monday evening. So it's at Haven't Station, if anybody's catching the train, it's literally right by and it's in one of the rooms by the local church, right near to the station in Portsmouth. And Pauline's um, organisation is called Take Cover and Pauline writes brilliant blogs um, and so people can access them from her website. And she's a fantastic photographer. Oh, she is, isn't she? Just, <laughs> yeah. Um, who else do we want to speak about? Della. Della, she's just releasing a book. Chris, do you want to tell the yeah, name of the so book? Oh, I don't know the name of the book off the top of my head. I've gone blank. Oh, well, but that's we're, we're okay. Put it, we'll put it in. We'll put it in the, in the thing. But she's launching, a, a book is being published today and she's having a book launch on Saturday up north somewhere. Again, I don't know where, but it's all on our social media so we can share that. But her book is available on um, Amazon. And again, we, we will share that. But we just mm. want to say good luck to Della. And Della also um, is trying to get Della's law pushed through Parliament. And Della's law is about um, stopping sexual offenders that are convicted um, from changing their names. Because yes. when they change their names, they can go on and abuse indefinitely, not tracked, not you know, no one's keeping an eye on them because they've changed their name. So she's trying to shut that loophole down. So if you if you just search for Della on social media, you will find it. Yeah. So and good whilst luck, we, Della. Whilst we're talking about up north, just before we go, because we are gonna have to say goodbye. No. Yes, what are the boys doing? Oh, the boys. So Danny and Mike, um, they are speaking with all, uh, in all institutions, different organisations, the NHS, for example, scouts, wherever, wherever they will get invited, these boys will go. And they're, they're using their lived experiences. Um, and I think their talk or their, um, their speciality is about um, million pieces. So we won't shatter into million pieces. Just ask us, ask us what's gone wrong. Ask yeah. us what's happened. Um, and then we will we will tell you just because we've gone through all of this trauma. We're not going to shatter into a million pieces. Um, we have got a lot of resilience and a lot of strength and we can use that to rebuild our own lives, but also help other people. Absolutely. The power um, of sharing. Like, what are they called? Our, our kid, something our kid. Again. <laughs> yeah oh we'll my put, brain we'll in. don't yeah. worry when this goes out uh, we'll add in it all in so no we'll add it all, yeah so, so we've given else no well, don't, i think don't that's it down yet no 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 <laughs> just in case we've forgotten anybody i wouldn't want to forget anybody there are loads and loads of people that i so would many. like to yeah so what we would do as we mentioned we're on youtube and we're on facebook so we what you'll start to see on facebook Yes, we'll be sharing our podcast, but we will share information like this as well so that there's a resource there that they don't always have to be re-listening and thinking, what did they say? Philip Lafferty. Yes. He's the fabulous, Mouse. Man. Yes, The, the mouse. mouse. That's as in the film, The Mouse, yeah, not yeah. the person. No, obviously that video was brilliant and he held those events up and down the country didn't he where survivors could come and speak at those events yeah there's so many people doing so many wonderful things we will share it as we come across it I think so Absolutely. that you've got more and more resources to access and what Absolutely. resonates with you is what you go with and what doesn't is what you leave yep absolutely I think you've said that perfectly and we are going to have to say goodbye okay Chris. yes we are all right <laughs> okay lovely to speak to you again 